Hello and welcome back to a very special episode of the Cryptid Ramblers podcast. Indeed. <laughs> I'm Scott and across from me is Callum. Hello. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm very well, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. good I, I'm, I'm quite excited to be doing our very first special episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, something we've always spoken about mm. and sort of flirted with a few different ideas as to subject matter and, and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, obviously with us both being, uh, you know, fans of... Or Hallow's Eve. Oh, it sort of made sense to, to be spooky. Absolutely, <laughs> it kind of made sense to um, you know kick off with something along those sort of lines. Yeah. So uh, yeah, excited to be back and to be talking about hopefully all things uh, spooky. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, to anyone that is new to the podcast that has uh, just found this particular episode on <laughs> yeah. YouTube, on YouTube this time. Um, but well, also, yeah. we'd like to direct our regular listeners over to YouTube because yeah. this one's a video podcast. So usually you'd have to get this on the Patreon, but yeah. you know we thought we'd uh, switch it up for you guys and yeah. give you a bit of a treat. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> a bit of a strong word, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get to see these lovely mugs. Absolutely, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, and also you get to see the uh, podcast studio. Yeah, our new uh, our new home mm. for the last few uh, episodes. Not so you only can... that, it's also a fully edited one as well. It will be. So we've got a lovely logo. It will be. Some lovely to, pictures. You have to see right that. About yeah. here. <laughs> right about here. <laughs> got a lot of post-production, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, I do, yeah. yeah. We've got enough time. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, this is really quite exciting to be getting into this. Mm. So we are going to be talking about various different stories that have been posted into yeah. us by our listeners. Absolutely, um, yeah. uh, friends and family, and uh, people from further afield. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, we've got some local legends, but we've also got some personal accounts, which uh, we're yeah. going to go through and absolutely. see how we react to those various yeah. ones. Because I've got some, and you got some. I have. Yeah, I have. And, uh, so it's yes. got a nice, a nice mix. I think, as yeah. you say, we've got a few personal accounts from you know sort of listeners of the podcast, and um, also some yeah, as you say, local legends and. Um, yeah, sort of haunted locations and, mm. and stories and, and whatnot. So hopefully there's enough to tantalise everyone. Yeah. A little, little mix of everything. So uh, yeah, hopefully enough to put the willies up, yeah? Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, we have. <laughs> <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. <laughs> so um, a shout out to our Patreons. So even yep. though this is a special, we still... Yep. Give a shout Still out to our Patreons. Yeah, so thank you very Justin much. Justin and James, thank you very much for your yeah. continued support, guys. Thank you, guys. It's very, very much appreciated. Absolutely. Um, but also, uh, a little word from our sponsor as well. Absolutely, why not? So as you guys can see, this is <laughs> Hellfire Studios, um, and it's Essex's first podcast uh, film and photography studio situated just 45 minutes from London. Hellfire Studio offers full creative content creation at hellfirecreative.com. Um, go there for some more information. But yeah. as a listener to us, absolutely, you guys get a 20% off when you go to hellfirestudio.uk yeah, and absolutely. you put the uh, code encrypted at the checkout. Yeah, and that's it. You get a lovely Switch 20% your, off your right service there. and whatever it is you want to you want to do, use that code and boom, absolutely. discount. Yeah. Indeed, mate, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So without a further ado. W without. <laughs> Let's get into it, man. So, what have you? Yes. Uh, what has come into you? So, yeah, like I say, you know, it's been um, been sort of a mix. But you know, as, as we both did through the socials and you know our sort of personal ones, we put some feelers out to kind of anyone really, and also sort of listeners of the the podcast mm. to see whether there was any people out there that had their own spooky encounters or sightings or you know hauntings or, or whatnot. And uh, yeah, I got um, got pointed in the direction of a few. Um, quite cool creepy uh stories um i mean in fact they all all the ones i've got all take us to um back over the pond um, oh right yeah yeah anywhere yeah. In <laughs> nowhere special really? oh, nowhere special this time sadly we, no the mountain mama no sadly no. not no not this time no it's <sighs> um no but it's uh yeah, creepy enough it, it's uh it's a mix of uh, new orleans and uh new jersey Oh, in cool. particular, yeah, um, our uh, two, uh, three of uh, of uh, the listeners hail from from those parts of the world. So, um, yeah, they knew of a few few little locations and uh, one personal story, um, you know, which is quite uh, which is quite cool. So, yeah, yeah, um, go for it, man. Yeah, jump in. 
Uh, well, the uh, the first one I'll um, start off with uh, is more of a, a personal um, sort of encounter. Uh, it comes in from a, a like I said, a listener of the uh, the podcast who has um, asked to remain anonymous. Fair enough. Which is fair enough. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Guys, you can keep your anonymity with us. That's yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's up to you guys. Um, now, this one is it's actually involves their sister, so it's not them directly. So. Um, Okay. It's uh, that their their sister was travelling uh, to work um, from Texas to New Orleans. Um, she would stay there typically for a week at a time, um, and you know, as I'm sure we all know, it's, it's widely believed that New Orleans is uh, somewhat haunted. Mm. You know, from its uh, you know, from its past, a lot some of, dark of it not magic too and distant and such. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'd love to go yeah. there, man. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, I'd love yeah. to go there. Would be good. Um, well. Ask me after this story. Well, to say, story. yeah, <laughs> yeah, to say, yeah, you might change your mind on that, but yeah, uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, when the, uh, the the sister returned home to Texas um, from New Orleans after her business trip, she realised that uh, she may have brought something back with her, um, and Ooh. not just her luggage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. or um, uh, maybe a, a, a transmission of, of some sort. Well, quite possibly. Um, that that evening, um, as she returned. Um, she was uh, she was going to sleep and heard a whispering voice say her name. Um, so it was like Lissy, Lissy, uh, which is a bit woohy. Um, the uh, apparently, like yeah, just sort of kind of freaked out. Hairs stood on end, um, and instinctively just shut her eyes tighter as you would in that situation yeah you think well you know if i close my eyes tight enough i'll ignore it yeah <laughs> and it will go away Get under the covers that's <laughs> you know ultimate safety yeah exactly um but the the voice uh continued to you know repeat her name in that same kind of whispered fashion mm. um and i don't know the the time scale in that respect in terms of how long it, it went on for um but that's when she'd basically had enough and and told it to to go away um and that's kind of exactly what she did. She was like, no, no, you can go away now. You know, you're not, you know, not welcome. Um, and almost right away, um, the voice did stop and no more kind of strangeness uh, occurred. Um, right. And she's never experienced anything like it before or, or since. That's crazy, that. Um, which, uh, yeah, which is just to think that you can just go to somewhere not even have an interaction whilst there, um, but still bring something mm. back. Um, there's there's these um, various different theories that come along with um, energies, shared energies that you might actually just walk through something and it just some of it might just get attached to you. Yeah. There's even a, a theory that um, about – they're kind of like energy threads that right. people have. So okay. they could be as – there are some people that say that they can see these energy threads, um, kind of like they can be like giant cables. They can appear as like giant cables of, of okay. light and energy, right. or they could be like hair thin. Um, and they can be, they can be instigated um, with something as little as making eye contact for a couple of seconds. So like right. if like, we've all done it mm. driving along and for some reason you just look at the, the, the pedestrian on the side of the road. Yeah. And they're looking directly at, at you and you make eye contact. Yeah. That's sometimes even enough to make those threads oh, right. appear. And then suddenly, you know, you're connected to, to that person. It's a weird sort wow, of- okay. Yeah, it's a weird sort of theory. And then, yeah, um, weird. I was weird. Again, I was listening to it on uh, Mysterious Universe a couple of weeks right, ago. Right, okay. So yeah. that's why that's kind of fresh in my mind, yeah, really. Yeah. But that's- um, Makes sense. But yeah, like you, you could just go to an area that yeah. might be somewhere like New Orleans that would yeah. be thick with energy. Yeah, and you just have something attached to like you or a, a possession that you know yeah. that you've got, and then you know you carry it, you know carry it around. It's so. a weird feeling as well when you hear something like that, like a like a whisper or, or oh yeah, I bet yeah, or something. Especially if you're sure as damn it that you know that something's been said or yeah, the like voice is not in your head says, or yeah. anything like that. It's, yeah, it's, you're not just sort of yeah, you think you're hearing things, but you can distinctly. Say, yeah, no, I, I heard mm. that. <laughs> yeah, but that's I've, not natural. I've yeah. had the the thing in in my head when I've been doing like the meditation and, and stuff like that. Mm. When I've gone into like I've, I've done all the breathing techniques and everything else like that, and then yeah, then I've taken a little bit of time just to sit and relax into it. Um, it's been a couple of times where the external noise has drowned out almost completely, 
and then there's something else that comes along. It's, right, okay. it's odd. It's, yeah. it, it's kind of, um, the only way I can describe it is like um, with a, uh, a sound insulated uh, glass door. Right. sort of thing so it's okay. almost like so when i'm coming out of the the meditation i realize oh it's almost like the door opens and i can hear the ambient noise again right okay. it's weird yeah it's very very but it's distinctive yeah yeah hard to describe but it's something along those sort of lines but yeah, I i've never done i've never experienced something kind of like what? going Scott, Scott, yeah 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 Scott. Not, like, deliberately trying to get your attention yeah i've had yeah. i've had like dad <laughs> yeah, we, we've had that. Yeah, I can vouch for that. Are you awake? <laughs> yeah, I want to go downstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the, hungry. The best one was um, when my boy, when Eli was probably about five or six, and uh, he he decided that uh, this was when he was getting up at the crack of dawn as well, like, right. like half past five, six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. on a Saturday. Yep. And the best one he ever did, and right. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. <laughs> He came walking in, completely silent, and then suddenly I felt something going up my nose. Right, right. up your nose, like inside. literally going up inside my nose, and I right. pulled back. I'm like, Ugh! and there he is standing there with a, a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex with a tail up, like this. <laughs> and he went, <laughs> little son. And he went, morning, daddy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Go to the living room. <laughs> yeah, go away. Yeah, go away. <laughs> All right, I'm up. I'm up. <laughs> I'm awake. I'm awake. Yeah. Yeah. I've been sneezing ever since. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought it? Yeah. Who would have thought, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's um yeah, I could definitely vouch for them them types of uh, <laughs> yeah. voices in the early yeah, hours. Your ones are but, still uh, still small. So. Still of that age as well. Yeah. Um but uh, yeah, thankfully not anything uh you know, sort of more um you know, more sinister like, you know, like yeah. that one actually having your name, you know, sort of whispered and I thought it was, I was quite impressed with how, you know, she sort of sound of mind, you know, enough to kind of know that it was, you know, a disembodied voice and that she could sort of give that, mm. you know, instruction and that it would, you know, and that she sort didn't of listen like to her, you know, because I don't think many people would think that it would be that, you know, easy. I, I know think, I wouldn't have done before sort of knowing. That I think that a lot was, of people, if they were to, were to hear something audible like that, they'd either mm. think someone was messing with them or yeah. they were schizophrenic. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that, that's... That's or also someone might have broken into well. the house or something, or, you know, something like that. Mm. That's something as well that people in certain circles are, like some doctors even, mm. some psychiatrists are even, um, or yeah, psychiatrists and psych psychologists are um, questioning the nature of various different mental health issues, specifically right. schizophrenia. Yeah. Like maybe they are actually hearing disembodied yeah, you voices. It, yeah, you mentioned last time, didn't you? Yeah. It's, it's actually, um, yeah. That they might, they're, they're sort of more f in tune with, mm. I don't know, the earth or the universe or whatever it might be, and that they're actually hearing these, you know, sort of voices and being told to sort of do things because they were more susceptible to picking up, yeah. you know, that message. So they're not actually nuts. They're just because in a lot of cases, I don't think I've ever really heard of a case where schizophrenia has been pleasant. It's always an unpleasant voice telling them to do do something horrible, things. yeah, yeah, or constantly telling them you're a loser, and you yeah, know, it's yeah. always been negative. Mm. So there's something strange about that. That it's like a, a like a negative entity, like yeah. a low level entity, is trying to feed off of some sort of mm. anguish or pain or some yeah. some sort of negative energy. Yeah, it's um, yeah. I don't know if if there are any listeners out there that do know that. Yeah, there are positive schizophrenia positive accounts or accounts. Yeah. Maybe then then yeah, get in touch. Let, let us know, know about it. Yeah. But It'd that be would be interesting to see whether or not there was. Yeah, because that must be the most upbeat person ever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the happiest person you know, it's probably them. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, Go get them. <laughs> the world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah. You're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wouldn't happen, would it? <laughs> no, I can't see it. I can't see it. Um, you certainly wouldn't admit to it either. If if you nah. if it was, because people think that's crazier mm. than the devil talking to you or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like a little cheerleader, like <laughs> a little cheerleader. Go elf. you. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that'd be brilliant. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so no, so I thought that was, uh, yeah, that, I mean, I've, I've, I've had, you know, not this, but, you know, sort of similar things, you know, recently, uh, happened that we've covered yeah. in sort of previous, in our previous uh, episodes, episodes. Yeah. but, um, but yeah, nothing like this. And I, I don't quite know how I'd, you know, react. I don't know if I'd be as calm and collected as, uh, as, as this person was, 
to kind of just be like, sometimes you have to turn to go away, please. Oh, well, I thought, I, yeah, I guess I'd, yeah, I'd be a little bit more, a little, little less diplomatic and <laughs> respond thusly, <laughs> yes, <laughs> as opposed to, uh, yeah. Can you please leave me alone? Respond appropriately. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. So, um, yeah, so thank you to the uh, listener for submitting yeah, uh, that one. Um, the next, uh, I've got th- three, um, three or four um, that have also come in from uh, listeners. They're all um, members of um, my little online book club that I'm uh, Excellent. a part of. Um so a little shout out to those guys. It's the uh, the uh, Pretty and Punk book club on uh, Wattpad. So if anyone's on there, any aspiring authors, come and uh, check us out. Um, and I don't know, they've not told me whether they want to be anonymous or not. <laughs> so ah, okay. I won't, I maybe won't read out their, well, their names, but they'll know who they are if they listen. Get on so. the socials and claim your story, guys. Yeah, or cu- yeah claim it if, uh, come if claim you want it. to. <laughs> <laughs> if you want him, oh, we shall. come and claim him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, sorry. Oh, you shall not pass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent. Um, so I'll, I'll jump into uh, into the first one. Um, the first one was, I mean, these are all new to me as well. So I'm, I'm, I was sort of coming at this, you know, with sort of fresh eyes as well, which I thought was, um, I thought was quite good. Um, but there's a mysterious site in uh, in, in southern New Jersey. Uh, which is just a body of water known as the Blue Hole. Yes, um, I've heard of this. Yeah, um, th- there's actually th- from just sort of looking into the story, it seems like all across all s- southern New Jersey, there's a, quite a few of them, but there's only one in particular that sort of has these particularly kind of strange uh, goings on, um, and it's located deep in the Pine Barrens of Winslow. Um, and it's on the county borders of Camden and Gloucester in southern New Jersey. Um, it is believed to be bottomless and a frequent pit stop of none other than the Jersey Devil himself. Which oh. I thought was quite cool, keeping it cryptid. Yes. Um, now, the though the clear blue water, you know, may seem inviting, uh, locals are actually warned about swimming in it. Um, unexplained whirlpools have reportedly <laughs> sucked down hapless swimmers. Um, some have been lucky enough to escape its uh, clutches and claim to have felt something trying to pull them down under the water. Mm. Um, now, interestingly, from a few accounts of people that have actually gone to the site, not necessarily kind of into the water, have said that the atmosphere changes when, from when they walk along the trail and then out into the clearing where that the body of water is mm. um, much. It kind of reminded me of that effect that we've talked about. And I can't the Oz remember, effect. Oz effect. That was it. I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, it reminded me of that. Gotcha. Um, it, the the wind will just sort of drop, and you know, sort of non-existent. Um, the birds will stop chirping, um, and it's just an eerie silence. Great. That, that just yeah, that just sort of takes over the the place. Every, all all atmosphere seems to just you know disappear from the moment you walk along the trail to like entering this sort of clearing and you're you know looking looking at the, mm. the 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 blue hole. I guess um, now there's no sign of life in the water either. There's no fish, no insects, nothing. It's just void of any any sort of life. And if it's bottomless and it and it's pretty big, this this open body yeah. of water. It's not just like a little little puddle. It's quite a big sort of cavernous you know, sort of space, um, and there's just nothing in it, aside from That's maybe weird. like debris or, you know, whatever, but yeah. Like no just, signs of life or anything like that, it's just... No, and it's just completely still. There's like no current, no ripple, like nothing. Wow. It looks like, like when you look at it, in certain pictures, it just looks like glass, like it's just a, an ice or glass bottom sort yeah. of thing, or sort of surface, I guess. That's... It, there's just no... That's weird. ...atmosphere, like it's all just been sucked out. Like in a vacuum bag or something, you know. Yeah, like which is basically what the the Oz effect is. Yeah, it, um, people describe it as being like you just mm. step into some sort of vacuum of sound. Yeah, exactly. I mean, no one actually mentions that specifically. That could be because they they're not aware of it, or mm. or I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong in it, but th- but just from reading that, that's what it reminded me of. And so I thought, yeah. well, maybe there is something to it. Then, if people are feeling uneasy and you know feel like they're being pulled into the 
you know, the water sort of thing? Is it because of... Well, like drawn in, almost like, yeah, like they, they feel look like at it and they feel like they've got yeah, to get into the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's weird. Some of the people, some people have sort of claimed to have felt that they had just this sudden need to have to, you know, go into the, the water and then they would feel... I think I can't remember. I, th- I think I've wrote it down further on in my notes, but they um, they, they mention it like ghostly, ghostly hands actually grabbing at their feet and and legs to sort of pull them, you know, down oh. beneath the uh, the water. <laughs> yeah, like the dead marshes in Lord yeah. of the Rings. Yeah, you know? yeah, pretty much going that. back to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, going back to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, um, that's weird. Yeah, it's it's um, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I'm gonna check that um, out a bit closer. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to um, mm. go back. Because like I say, there are uh, a number of these blue holes dotted around um, New Jersey. Uh, and it is believed that they were created by uh, mining activities in the state from, you know, sort of many years ago. And obviously mm. where they've just bored these big holes and then just kind of left them. And then they've... The water you know, tables gradually- come up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's yeah. fed from the the water underground as opposed to any nearby rivers and, and streams, which is why I think they... Explain or this how they explain the fact that there's no, you know, kind of life, no current or, or anything because it's come from beneath the, yeah. you know, sort of the earth as opposed to. And it, it, I suppose they're relatively new. It's not not, not like they were, um, like they were caverns that were carved by the water, which, which would bring life no. with it and everything. No, they're, they're relatively new. Yeah. yeah, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, yeah. in that comparison, yeah, they're, they're, I'd say they're a lot newer. Um, now, what I thought was quite weird is that locals have, have dubbed them, um, or, or this one in particular, the Devil's Puddle, <laughs> <laughs> and claim to have seen the devil himself crawl out of it, uh, but that, and that could tie into the, the Jersey, Jersey Devil, Devil yeah, sightings. Of course. Yeah. Um, now, many who have swum in, in the body of water sadly haven't made it out, and when their bodies have been retrieved, they're found with scratch marks on their backs and legs, which... Oh. which Kind of com- but, but the dragging down sort yeah, of thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It kind of it, it, it sort of fits in with 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 that, which I think is quite that's f- quite weird. Could terrifying. be quite convenient, but it could also be. I mean, horrible. That, that's think- got to be some people's like worst nightmare. I mean, for me, it's well, it's- it would be, wouldn't it? I mean, some people are uneasy in the water anyway because they mm. can't see below the surface. They don't know what's going to be like grabbing they don't at them. And- the water on their face, and yeah, and exactly. Such. And if they could, but it, you can actually feel. You know something. It's different if like a, a fish was to swim past and knock your leg, or yeah, well, a bit fish, of seaweed, they, or yeah, you know, like wildlife would steer clear of you unless it was like a predator, yeah, or something like that. But to actually feel like a, a hand, sort Ooh. of, or, or you know, claw at you or grab you, or I'll be like, oh, in a, in oh. a potentially bottomless a, pit. Potentially, yeah. Well, um, there was something they said that they've they've tried to find the bottom, and they put um, like these these particular like readers or. or or on, on cables and basically drop it into the hole and they're just yeah. dropping it and dropping it and dropping it with seemingly no end in sight. We need more cable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so they don't know whether it is just because it is genuinely wow. bottomless or whether they kind of hit like a, a cavern or something and then they end up following like a tunnel. Like an underwater or stream sort of, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they don't know if they find that. or well, if there's it does whirlpools just- and stuff like that, then there must be some sort of water flow mm. deep down. Yeah. Then yeah. So, so, yeah, potentially an incredibly strong flow. Mm. Yeah. If yeah. it's just you know maybe taking the probe and off it goes and sort then, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So no, they've never actually been able to like go, kunk, kunk, you know, and, and sort of hit the the sort of the bottom. It just it seems to be just continuous. Yeah. Going. Which is what feeds the belief that it is a bottomless kind of pool of God. water. Um, now, now, interestingly, um, <laughs> native people of the region believe that it was formed from the tears of a woman crying over her unfaithful lover. Lover, right? Which I mean, they'd be dotted all over the shop in England, wouldn't they? If you, if that was <laughs> if that happened, you would be, be able- quite a few local, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh. You wouldn't be able to, you know, turn around without walking into one. <laughs> oh, I just stepped oh, in her again. Devil's you puddle again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, they also believe that the water carries with it medicinal qualities, um, but of course this comes at a risk. Uh, the water is guarded by a jealous and violent spirits um, who, whose only purpose is to sort of guard its secrets, i.e. stop people stop from finding out that it's medicinal, um, its medicinal purposes and stuff. Um, those who go too close um, to the water would be grabbed by ghostly hands and dragged to the depths, never to be seen again. Wow. 
So even the natives have this yeah. sort of these these this stories sort of, that are this lore or legend, yeah, and collaborated by personal accounts. Mm. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah, that is crazy. Sadly, I couldn't find any actual accounts of someone saying, "Oh, you know, on this day in the nineties or whatever, I you know I went for a swim and you know I See, felt you know there's, there's there's nothing like any. I couldn't see any personal accounts. Mm. It was more just kind of a general. This Legend. Is, this is the thing about personal accounts, and I, I, I knew this before we, before we started talking about doing an episode like this. Yeah. Um, personal accounts are few and far between mm. because it comes with a stigma. Oh yeah, it you know, yeah. because it comes with that that what oh, you're just mental, mate. You're just crazy. Yeah. Well, that's why we've had stories submit to us where the, the people have asked to be anonymous. anonymous because of the backlash that could possibly come, mm. you know, sort of from it because there is still that stigma to this day. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously the- Nonsense or- Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, the utter nonsense. The utter nonsense. The utter nonsense, <laughs> catchphrase for <laughs> usual listeners. There will be t-shirts soon. <laughs> yeah, there will be. Yes, yes, I like it. I like your ideas. Um, but yeah, it's just, I think that stigma comes from there being a general- um, What's the word? Intolerance of yeah, older stories is. and everything yeah. else like that. You know, we very much live in a very material world where it's governed by science, yeah. you know, because science is forever changing. And the, the, the science that you get from one person or one expert differs from a science that you're getting from someone else. Um, yeah, exactly. It's never going to be necessarily the same. And it is because of that that, you know, people don't want to, mm. you know, sort of you know, come forward. You know, I mean, even talking about the fact that we do this type of podcast comes with a stigma. People look at you as like, oh, weird yeah. or like, mm, I get you believe of, in all that? Yeah. I get one of two reactions. I, I get I get that one yeah. or I get, oh my God, I'm yeah. going to tell you, talk to me, talk to me. I want to talk yeah, about yeah. aliens. I want to talk about, and I'm like, hey, I've got, I've got to crack on with work. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've got get, drywall to hang look, with. Look, look mate, <laughs> take a listen. <laughs> Get in touch. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I've, got to, I've got to do a ceiling, mate. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Speak to you in a bit. Yeah, but yeah, I get, I get that as well. Yeah. And, I, and I got that for a long, long time as well because there, there are subjects that I've wanted to talk to people about for years. Yeah, and like even the people that I work with regularly, mm. they, they even to this day they still roll their eyes. They're like, oh yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Here we go again. Talk about it to anyone really at work unless they ask me about it because I know I'm just going to get the eye rolls and the mocking and you think oh okay I can't be bothered with it <laughs> ask me about Bigfoot uh, yeah mate you need yeah. to do that I do need, you need to, to do, do that, that t-shirt yep yep <laughs> you need to do that well, no more details for that uh, but we will be doing that t-shirt yeah exactly I think um, <laughs> yeah I think I've a, I think something else that probably might put people off is that you know anyone that knows me knows that I like to talk and so if you get yeah. me on a subject that I'm interested in I'm like, bah, 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 just going to keep bah, bah, on bah, bah, going. Bah, 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 bah. And you can see, sometimes see people just glaze over and instantly I think, oh, okay, you've regretted asking me now, haven't you? <laughs> 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 you, just, you just see it in people's eyes. And yeah. You know, like the, the, the regret. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm just, just like, oh, how do I get out of this oh, now? Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll stop. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we noticed it yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. We know yeah. those signs. We'll let you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you are free to leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not held here against your no. will. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. Yeah, love no, that's it. good. Um. Yes, yeah, so that was um, yes, yeah, so that was that one, which was um, which is, I think is just cool in itself to have something you know like that that's you know relatively local to them that's got so much you know legend and stuff. Because I mean, mm. y y y you can Google you know haunted places you know in 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 America, and I think every bloody road has got a house that's haunted, or a, you know a, every state has got something. It's a legal or whatever. requirement if you're selling a house, you have to say you have to, whether yeah. or not it's haunted. Which I think is, you know, yeah, it, it it's whether or not you believe it's haunted. Well, that's I guess the thing, really, because yeah. we, we've discussed this, haven't we? What you know, what yeah, actually came up creates yeah. the, the phenomena? Is it the thoughts and feelings and everything yeah. else that goes into it, or is the phenomena that comes first and before the yeah, belief? Exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. We spoke about that before. Weird definitely. One. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how true that is, though, because there is a someone who's a uh, in the the book club that I mentioned is a, a realtor, and, and they, uh, which is just a uh, an estate agent yeah. <laughs> over yeah. here <laughs> for anyone who's like what yeah. um, we've got enough American they, TV we know yeah, what that is exactly <laughs> and they um, uh, I can't remember exactly what they said but that's only partly true I think they're oh, so I think, it's not like a federal law it might just be like a well, state like, law it's like over here like if you have problem you know if you have problem with your neighbours you mm. don't have to declare it but if you filed a police report because of your neighbours 
Ah. You have to declare it when you sell the house. And so I think it's kind of a bit of a loose example, but I think it's kind of similar in the States with the hauntings. Like if, if you just think that it, it's haunted, mm. I don't think you necessarily have to declare it. I think something... Or if you've had a priest round. Well, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. If you've <laughs> had exercised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or if, you've, or if something's actually happened or been reported or something, yeah, I think gotcha. you have to. So, I th- But but yeah, it's it, they've got enough of them to... Crazy. Yeah, to actually have to have that written in to their property law somewhere, which is just uh, nuts. Can you imagine that over here? Oh, mate. People wouldn't buy your house just because they think you're nuts. Never mind... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Never mind because they believe in ghosts. Yeah. yeah. But I'll get lost. Get out of it. <laughs> yeah. We've got that great British cynicism. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the next one, um, surprise, surprise, keeps us in uh, in South Jersey. Um, and it takes us along Route 55, um, which, which goes through there, uh, which was constructed in 1983. Uh, the trouble with it was, um, is that they constructed it through part of an 8,000-year-old ancient Indian burial ground. Oh, yes. Which is always a no-no. That old ploy. Absolutely. Um, Come on, they had <laughs> films about that in the 80s. I know. They should have should known should about learn, this. Man. Come on. Um, if, you, yeah, if, you've, if you've seen what Poltergeist, you don't yeah. touch an Indian burial Just ground. don't Just, do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> and, and, you know, funnily enough, a chief and medicine man um, of the local uh, Delaware Indians... Um, which actually sounded like an NFL team, um, (laughs) (laughs) did actually warn the Department of Transportation uh, not to build it across uh, the land because it was uh, an ancient burial ground. Um, You know, but of course they didn't listen. Um, He even suggested where they could relocate the uh, road through a neighbouring field, which would only have added about three miles onto the the sort of the the stretch Mm. of road or, or to anyone's journey, I guess. Um, but of course they refused and went about their construction. Um, now you know f- what they could learn a lot from the Icelanders. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for the Icelandics, the way yeah. they build their roads, they go yeah. round. They'll go round stuff because they ground. think it's got trolls. Yeah, never mind people, yeah, trolls and elves remains and, 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 and yeah, 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 it's just yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, now the first accident occurred during its construction, uh, and it happened to a thirty-four-year-old. Who, who was run over by his own steamroller? No, no. I only laughed because that instantly reminded me of that scene from Austin Powers, <laughs> where the guy's about fifty feet away from him, and he's standing Get there going, the "No way, no!" Move! And he's just pee rolling towards him. <laughs> it runs over. No, we shouldn't laugh because this did supposedly actually happen to a guy. So oh no! We do apologise, oh. but. Uh, I couldn't help yeah. but think of that scene because how do you get run over by a steamroller? Your own, I guess. Well, you'd have to like literally like jump in front of it or fall in front of it at or, the exact moment. Or? Or dragged under it. Dragged under it. <laughs> or pushed. One of the two. Um, now, another worker fell to his death whilst working on the underpass, um, swept off it by an unexpected high wind that seemingly came out of nowhere. Like, it was a still day, like... I've experienced that a few times. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Haven't we all? Yeah. 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 Less unexpected, though. <laughs> <laughs> Feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it was like, a you know, a calm, you know, cool day, you know, no kind of wind or, or anything. And then just mm. suddenly, like, literally just whoosh, yeah, grabbed him and, yeah, knocked him off. And, uh, yeah, sadly oh. fell fell to his... Uh, Poor bugger. Fell to his death, yeah. Um, now... So not long after that, a site inspector um, dropped dead on site um, from a brain aneurysm. Wow. Seemingly no pre-existing, you know, health conditions or any rhyme or reason, just pop, Gone. Drop, drop dead, yeah. Uh, and not long after, this chap fell um, wow. as well, obviously on the same, on the same site. Um, of course, other tragedies followed, um, either workers directly or the families of those workers who died on the construction um, most of which dying from um, cancer not long after the, the the loved one who worked on the construction passed away. Under oh, so like it was almost like like a connected thing. Oh, yeah, that's some bad juju. That is it? big stuff. Yeah, and and the, the, I mean, there's articles from the 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 um, Indian chief even like afterwards saying like you know it's just such a Told tragedy so. that yeah but it was kind of like i yeah. did tell him i warned him that this was going to happen but they didn't you know sort of listen he said, it's sad that it happened but 
a you word wand. <laughs> you know what? The more and more we look into this sort of stuff, yeah. the more I realise that maybe we should be listening to these like chiefs, these yeah. shamans. They and were such here first. That, <laughs> listen, yeah. listen to what they've these got to say. These cultures are older than ours. Yeah, exactly. And they've you know, stood the test of time. And maybe, yeah. maybe just it's worth yeah. listening to. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Um, now, we're going to... Um, we're actually going to play the, the video um, now. Yep. There. Yep, so you guys um, can see this. And it's, uh, take, it was taken by a local who was driving down um, Route 55, and he captures what appears to be a woman in a white dress uh, walking along the side of the road. Um, he sp- he spots her in the the mm. distance, but slows right down to you sent this to, to me to last film night, it. yeah. And even now, as I'm playing it in my head, yeah. like you guys are seeing it here. Yeah. It gives me, the, it gave me the chills. Yeah, it's you know, freaky. I really... It does look disembodied, and it doesn't have like a natural walking, you know, sort of pattern. It, it's when it does it, look... it's when the, the the vehicle gets beside, yeah, and it's the <laughs> yeah. the way it, it moves and everything. Yeah, yeah it just doesn't seem natural. If it's if you know if it's a fake, then it's a it's a very good one. But it was unsettling to to watch, mm. and that was also um, shared by the same listener who provided the uh, the the initial. Um, well, point me in the direction of um, gotcha. Route Fifty Five because yeah, it's not far from not far where from they them. live. Yeah, I think wow. they, I think they might even have said they've actually driven down it themselves. Sadly, they've not had any personal uh, personal encounters. Well, but uh, <laughs> sadly for us, sadly for us, but, good but news for them. Good news for them, indeed. <laughs> yeah, being biased, obviously. <laughs> yeah. After what you just told me, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please, neck, man. Yeah, <laughs> have a heart. <laughs> yeah, see, I do. I do. It's small <laughs> and cold and black, and made of stone. Yeah. <laughs> Three yeah, sizes too small. <laughs> Three sizes too small, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If only that weren't true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, another one. Um, from, I think, from the same person. Um, and, or was it? I can't remember. But, yeah, it was from another listener anyway in the same group. And uh, Good work, man. I know. Good work. Yeah. Well, it's because I'm don't keeping them anonymous, <laughs> so I've sort of confused myself. <laughs> um, now, this uh, takes us to uh, Connecticut and the Norwich State Hospital um, yes. for another spooky uh, location. Um, uh, yeah, this one is just it's just good old asylum, hor- like haunted mm. story sort of thing. Um, now, when it was originally uh, opened uh, in 1904, its actual full name was the Norwich State Hospital for the Insane. It was later uh, shortened to Norwich State Hospital and... Um, as it was, of course, to be used as a mostly as a psychiatric hospital. Mm. The uses changed kind of a little bit over the years, but yeah. for the most part, it was for I believe sort of the mentally challenged. I think I challenged. might have got this wrong, but I've I, I've seen quite a few things on uh, the Norwich State Hospital. Oh yeah, there I is. I believe there was like uh, it, it became a hospital for tuberculosis at one point. That was the last thing. It yeah, that was the last uh, use that mm. it was. It was uh, to yeah to house. Um, yeah, TB patients um, in its kind of later years, but yeah, initially it was um, yeah, a, 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 well, an insane asylum, I guess, is what is what they chalked it up as. But obviously, it had to be a little bit more diplomatic when it was actually used as such. Um, it was initially only one building that held uh, or could hold ninety five uh, patients, but not long after that, it it grew quite quickly uh, and so they had to add two additional buildings um, and the residency upped to about 151 only uh, only a year later mm. um, so it was like 60 60 odd patients increase in a year from when it first opened so it was at That's full capacity plus some in a year so yeah um, by the 1930s they'd ha- They'd added over 20 buildings, um, and most of these were all connected by underground tunnels um, used to transport patients from one building to another. Um, wow, because that's not terrifying. No. No, is that, no, no and this, uh, the listener that provided this actually sort of suggested that they were actually or have been become known as the corpse tunnels. So you can only imagine yes. what they used them as. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't find anything online to kind of, Back no, it up, I've, I've other than this. other than pictures and videos of actually the the, the tunnels themselves, and mm. obviously confirmation that patients were transported from through them from you know one part to you know the other. Didn't say whether or not they were alive. 
No, exactly. Well, no, true. <laughs> it didn't. You're right. That's yeah. a good point. It didn't. It just said transporting patients. So yeah, that's no, a very good point. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't specify that they were. They were still alive when they did it. Well, they'd um, be suspicious if they did specify. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, honestly, mm, these people are alive. They were proven when they went down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't account for what happened during it. No. no <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've heard about this, and this yeah. is something that's happened all over the states in these various different yeah. um, uh, asylums for the insane, or, or they call them mm. lunatic asylums. Yeah. Um, that they had various different tunnels yeah. that – basically were just used for cold storage pretty yeah pretty much you know? i think that was the that's certainly the suggestion in in this case um oh. now that the first documented um misfortune <laughs> as is as is put on online <laughs> right. um occurred in 1914 um when a patient um hung himself in his in his room um, and i think around this time it had started to you know, even then, you know, sort of what, 10 years later, nine, 10 years later, it was starting to resemble more of a prison. Mm. So the rooms were more like cells, there were bars on the windows. So it, it sort of quickly swift, you know, changed from a, a hospital to more of a, a sort of a prison environment. Well, I, I suppose that they would have more and more dangerous patients, well, really. Yeah, but it's, well, yeah, to the point where in, in the latter years, uh, I believe, um, they actually had to... Um, Build a maximum security uh, oh. building for the for the types of patients that they were, um, you know, accepting, um, and that's the uh, that's the more uh, most notorious part of the uh, hospital, mm. um, from what I understand. Um, I mean, modern ones are, are strange enough. You know, yeah, I'd, exactly. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I mm. ended up having to go and do some work in one in, in Bromley, I think it was. Right. Um, wasn't there for long. Mm. Like, two days yeah. tops which is probably and, enough <laughs> yeah and that's a modern one and it was nice wow. it was clean it was oh, wow. but even then it was still there were still some people in there that weren't allowed out of their rooms and they were very aggressive like because new are. faces and everything yeah exactly They're new like, sounds faces yeah, yeah. They, they did not like us being there whatsoever Bloody so are. i can't even imagine what it must have been like 100 years back ago. then yeah exactly um yeah so, so, yeah, so someone had already um, hung themselves, sadly. And then in 1919, a hot water heater exploded, killing two of the employees. Um, countless more people lost their lives in, in you know, various uh, accidents, whether at the facility or their home. Um, oh. Yeah, there was, um, I think, one, one nurse hung herself uh, at home. Um, another employee um, was hit by a car crossing the road to to the hospital um wow. so just a lot of odd deaths of not just inmate uh, inmates uh, patients but of the staff and employees the inmates, I mean, technically yeah. they were with how yeah. it, they it weren't getting sort of back out were they no let's be honest no well interestingly they were investigated um the the, the hospital was decommissioned in 1996 and this followed um yeah. countless reports of various types of abuse by staff on the patients mm. You know, sexual abuse, violent abuse, uh, you know, starving them, you know, oh, sort of tying them God. up, abandoning them, just, yeah, all, all the sort of literally the horror stories that you hear. This came out in, in various investigations um, mm -hmm. leading up to its decommission. However, it was decommissioned as a result of those or whether it just kind of ran its natural course. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But a lot of, there were still patients using the facilities even up to 96 when it shut. Wow, really? Yeah, and they were transported to obviously other hospitals or other facilities around uh, around the state. Um, it's actually featured in uh, Ghost Hunters, um, the, mm. the TV show. The, <laughs> yeah. uh, the TAPS team uh, the taps. investigated the, uh, the hospital back in 2010 mm. uh, based on the strong belief that it is uh, haunted. I've actually I found the season and uh, episode that it is, so I'm going to watch it. Yeah, there's quite a few um, people that have done, like quite yeah. a few teams that have oh, done investigations. Yeah, and urban explorers and yeah. all sorts go in there. And I mean, I've, I've watched a few fair few videos only this afternoon, actually, of, of people sort of going around there. Um, and yeah, it's... Lots of disembodied voices and stuff. People Just a lot like, of noises. People hearing sort of call, calling out down the corridors like, and stuff like this. Like that sort of yeah, thing, a lot of yeah. scratching and a lot of scurrying and yeah, it's just... Yeah, it it's, seems quite unsettling to, it's one to of watch those, them. It's one of those things that, um, in in light of what we were just talking about with regards to mental health and, and, and stuff like this and yeah. various different conditions. Yeah. And I remember thinking this, um, like, 
when I was younger, like mm. when we met like, at college, thinking, yeah, yeah. why are I, why do you always hear about haunted insane asylums and, and yeah. stuff like this? Why do you always hear about them being haunted after yeah. they've just been abandoned and yeah. such? And it's no wonder. It's because they're horrible, bloody places. Yeah. <laughs> That's All that why. negative energy and, and yeah. everything else, you know. That it's going to manifest into something, isn't it? Yeah, if people are experiencing all these um, various different mental issues yeah. and they are attached to some sort of entity, mm. then when that person dies, that entity is just going to wander about and see what else it can try and infect, what else it could try and latch onto. Yeah, So exactly. all that a collective negative energy is just going to imprint on a place. And mm. all those sort of places should just be torn down. Really? Yeah, exactly. Especially like, if there's investigation, they should just be t- teared down. Yeah, spe- you know, especially now. I suppose that's why you hear less and less of them. I mean, that you know, there was one not far from us that got um, mm. shut down and torn down, didn't it? And uh, I mean, a few years ago now, but um, you know, it's relatively recent in the you know the grand scheme of things. Mm. Um, so I think it's becoming more and more of a you know sort of a, a taboo to kind of have these institutions open. But sadly, they you know there is a belief that they are still needed. Yeah. Um, based on you know certain traumas that people sadly you know sort of go through, but um, but yeah, I, I, that, I, I do like a good uh, sort of creepy haunting, um, yeah. and it's you know it's, it's better when it's in a <laughs> in an asylum or you know something yeah. like that, it's, away from home, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. And nowhere near where I live, yeah, yeah I gotcha. Um, but the the cool thing was, and I think this is why it got brought up by um by, by our listener was that her husband, um had to go to the hospital and use it for urban warfare training um, when he was in the Guard. Uh, so presumably that means the National Guard. Yeah, I, I would presumably. assume so, yeah. um, And uh, it was sometimes or mostly at night when he would do his training and it included being down in the corpse tunnels. Oh, sod that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope. sod that. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good grief. Court martial, please. <laughs> yeah. I'll see myself out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm making sure I'm going down with a flashlight and spare batteries. Yeah. Thank you very and much. And live rounds. <laughs> yeah. Like they're going to do anything. Yeah. So, well, I'd feel safer. Let's put it that way. I'd feel safer. Or put yourself out of your misery, you mean. Put myself yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. want to go down with one bullet, please. Yeah, if, if nothing else. Yeah. yeah. Good grief. Um now, just to uh, just to end on on the the last one, uh, it's quite a quite a short one, but mm. I thought it was quite good following that you know the sort of the theme that we've been uh, that we've I've been talking along anyway. Yeah. Sure. Um, now it's a this one's more of an urban legend, um, you know. So it's it's based on Nile Canyon Road in San Francisco, California. Um, it's it surrounds the death of a young girl following a car accident. Um, apparently it occurred on February the 28th, but the year varies depending on the account. Mm. Not so no one's really got a grasp of, you know, when it actually happened uh, in terms of the year. So it, it could be fairly recent. It could have been a hundred years ago. Gotcha. No one really seems to to know, but it, it follows the same sort of story about, you know, young girls in a car accident and, you know, and she, she sort of died. And the sightings happen when people believe to have seen uh, said young girl uh, just waiting on the corner of the road where she died. Um, drivers will pass her, stop, and ask her if she needs a, a lift anywhere, to which she gratefully obliges. Mm. Um, she gives them one of two addresses, which apparently leads to two places on the other side of a bridge, which is along along this road. Um, she g- presumably gets in the car, the driver sets off, However, when they reach the start of the bridge, she disappears from the car. Whoa. And then they're left to make the rest of the journey on their own. <laughs> Swiftly home. With no their doubt. heart in their throat. <laughs> so that. <laughs> yeah. I mean so I wouldn't that. I mean I wouldn't I can't say I'd stop anyway, but no I definitely won't now. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> now you hear of that or, thing. Yeah. Or at least, you know, one of the questions in the criteria will be, Are you a ghost girl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are are you still alive? Are you real? Yeah, it kind of yeah. reminds me of that scene in uh, Men in Black when they've got the target practice, and there's the little girl with the books, <laughs> shoots her in the and end. there's all the monsters and stuff, and Will Smith shoots her. Yeah, and they're like, "What did you do that for?" And he's like, "Well, you know, these guys, I can imagine being here. You know, he's just working out. You know, he's just doing whatever, blah blah. But you know, it's you know late at night. You know, streets of like Brooklyn or whatever." <laughs> Why is a little white girl with a science book walk- yeah, <laughs> walking on her own? Physics, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah she's like, up to something. She's sus, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's exactly the same thing here. He's like, oh, you know, young girl, you know, 
pitch black late at night, mm. dark abandoned road. Nope. Well, this is the thing, right? Like, like, <laughs> -uh. Out in the States, that was something that happened regularly, like hitchhiking and stuff like that in the like, oh, 60s yeah, exactly. and the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, that was what yeah, they did. It's and, actually a hitchhiking urban legend. Yeah. So yeah, it's now, exactly that. you know, then serial killers happened and it's no longer really something that happens anymore. Yeah, you know, exactly, like with the hitchhiking yeah. and whatnot. So yeah, it's, um, that's strange. It's yeah, strange. Man. Yeah, it was only a short one, but I just, I just quite like the the I think nasty well, sort of nature of it. <laughs> I think as well, like with with regards to how different it is, because over mm. here in the UK, you're not that far from any sort of town or anything like that. No, you know, out no. in out in the states, you could you be, be like a good nowhere. hour or two yeah. potentially from, from like the nearest like gas station. or Yeah, something exactly. Like that. Yeah, so things like this are more more likely, which mm. I think is why they've got such an abundance of them. But yeah, from that imagine that the, uh, you're just chit chatting away course. and everything, and suddenly you look over. I and... see. You now, where are you from? Or you know, what are you doing out so late? Blah, blah, blah. Hello, hello. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it <laughs> yeah. out of here. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, even just thinking about it, it gives me chills. Yeah. Especially when the the video that we uh, you know, that we that we played earlier, yeah, you, you imagine stopping, letting her in the car, like get out of it, <laughs> lock the but, doors. <laughs> the only people who'd stop to try and give her a lift are Harry and Lloyd. <laughs> That's yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. That's it, exactly. Yeah. Hey, you look like you do, could do with a lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. But, See you um, later. But yeah, so no, that's near the end of the. Um, yeah, the sort of the uh, the accounts and uh, and the stories, um, which yeah, which which I liked. I thought you know we've done quite well there with mm. with the with what they uh, sort of provided. Cool, so man. yeah, thank you again for getting in touch and uh, you know bringing those to our attention. It was nice to have that difference between a sort of a personal account, you know, and then some sort of local you know legends or hotspots yeah. that are yeah sort of local to to them. But uh, thankfully, That's from what cool. we've heard. No, no direct uh, <laughs> encounters. Well, or that would have helped. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> if I'm being picky. Well, <laughs> yeah, they, maybe I've got one. Maybe you have. Maybe I've got one or two. Yeah, absolutely. That, um, that I'll certainly uh, be presenting. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but I do have one that was. Um, it, it, it's not a personal account of their own. Okay, but it was directed. Um, I was directed to it by a listener. Okay, so thank you very much, Lois. Yep, thank much you. Much appreciated. <laughs> so. Um, I will read this out. This is about a demon possession. Oh, wow. An actual demon, demon possession. So I'll read it as it goes. After my brother's possession, he was able to tell me the details leading up to it and what actually happened. Mm. As I wrote on here before, so this is part of a blog. Yeah. Um, he and a bunch of friends messed around with a ghost app, and that is essentially what opened up the gate of hell, literally. I so don't. we've always known legends about Ouija boards and, and yep. such, you don't muck around with them. No, you, you don't know. have to believe in it to know that you don't risk chancing well, it. <laughs> maybe the, the new version of it is yeah, the old the apps. ghost apps yeah. and stuff, which we've all, you know, anyone seen that is them. listening to us yeah. or watching us will be interested in those sort of things and would have seen other yeah, of course, yeah. YouTubers doing, doing such things like that. Um, so one day, as he was getting ready to leave for work, he was smoking a cigarette in his garage uh, when he felt the urge to write something down. Okay. So on a notebook that he kept on a table in his garage, he mm. began to write Monday. And he was okay. like, it's weird. So he goes, what's Monday? He asks out loud. I just thought it was weird. Mm. Then he continues to write, you're dead. He goes, what? He says out loud again. And then he writes, you're mine. Writes correctly as well for grammatical right effect yeah. um so he that pissed him right off he was like this what the hell is this i'm going insane mm. so he screams who the hell are you and it begins to write out s a t a n so he throws a notebook and the pen down and yells out you don't Mom! <laughs> Mom! <Help! laughs> <laughs> so he he, he says it's because it's weird because it like the listener that wrote in about their sister again had yeah. the sound of mind to go you don't have a say over my life i do yeah and he stands up and suddenly he felt tingling pins and needles feel like running through his entire body yeah he starts walking towards the door 
but not by his own will. Something is sending him that way. Something's controlling his body. It's making right. him take those steps. Okay. Um, then he starts hearing the voices loud and clear. And they're saying, come this way, come this way. Wow. So there's still, so coming from the, the, the poster, there's still one thing that stands out to me about that day. My brother kept saying that, that they were in his stomach. And for six hours, he squeezed his stomach, bent over in pain. His hands never moved from his abdomen for the whole six hours. At one point, he lifted his shirt, telling us to look at it. And I'll never forget it. Something, a bulge, moved up and down, up and down in his stomach. So in the ab abdomen mm. region. Out of all the things I witnessed that, that day, that is the only thing that is unexplainable to me. After witnessing what happened to my brother, I believe with all of my heart that God is real and so is Satan. It took my brother's possession for me to believe in God again. In a way, my brother saved my soul that day. My little brother was possessed by eight demons. I know, it sounds crazy. I thought so too. Growing up, I loved anything that had to do with supernatural or paranormal. Yeah. Paranormal even. I loved hearing stories about it and watching movies, but never have I ever witnessed anything for myself. Yeah. So when my little brother was possessed, I didn't believe it. He, was, he wasn't projectile vomiting, green gooey shit. His head wasn't spinning around. He wasn't levitating or making the lights flicker on and off or even moving objects throughout the house with just his mind. So I think in he smoked a bad batch, probably <laughs> laced with bath salts. <laughs> right, okay. It seems to be a, a thing that's happening out there at the moment. So right. they called 911. <clears throat> Long story short, for five hours, my brother was in spiritual warfare, and I shame of, shamefully admit I did not believe him. The demon spoke to him for five hours, but he was so strong, he begged to take them, he begged them, so his mum and, and, and her, to take him to a church and to pray. But all I did was give him some water and told him to sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the natural response yeah, for most people, yeah. to be fair. It all, yeah, like you think, oh, little brother's pissing about again. Yeah, yeah. You know, just sleep it off, will you? Yeah. Like you've, ate, you, you've had too much. You smoked a bad batch, didn't you, boy? You know, it's one of those sort of things, maybe. You've been at those mushrooms again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't touch the ones in my garden. I don't I don't need that. <laughs> no. So after four hours of torment, yeah. my father, a pastor, just released from hospital, apparently had some sort of issue that they'd been spent a bit of time in hospital, right. um, just came out of hospital literally that day, um, cast the demons out of him, basically performed... Uh, Exorcism, I guess. Technically, an unsanctioned exorcism. Yeah. Because I, from what I believe, they have to be sanctioned by the church. Oh, really? Yeah. They have, oh, wow. there's, a, there's a procedure that they go through because there are actual um, real exorcists that are trained by the Vatican. And they do go across the world. Oh, right. Performing exorcisms. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but, they ha it, but it has to be sanctioned. Did not know that. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's an actual real thing that... that yeah. You can actually go and take a course. Obviously, you have to be in a certain position within the the church as it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not like something you and I can just apply I'll to say, online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like adult community college in yeah. the evenings, and yeah, uh, you, uh, yeah. yeah, you you know you can't just join the Swiss Guard or something like that and sneak your way in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, sit down for this class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, still. After all was done, I felt my brother was just having a psychological meltdown. I still did not check on, I did still did not believe he was actually possessed until the next day when I went to the house and to check on him. I saw him and he was back to his old self. He was so happy to see me and he told me his experience and man, I felt like an asshole. <laughs> so he explained that in the build up to it, he would sleep at night and he'd hear a humming noise. And then he would wake up in his room, but not in his bed, turn around and see himself sleeping. Okay. Turn around <laughs> and face the bed and see himself sleeping. Nope. 
I've experienced something like that with the meditation and it is freaky. Really, really freaky. Um, He would do this uh, seemingly every night Um, and he began to walk around the house. So he became comfortable being in this sort of liminal state. Yeah. And he would see figures around the entire house. So just um, maybe like a in the peripherals sort Mm. of thing. That's kind of how it's described. This was so exciting to him, that that this new experience, and he would even look forward to it. So actually looking forward to going to sleep, to jump into almost like this lucid dreaming liminal state. Yeah, yeah. And eventually he didn't even have to sleep to be able to do this. And these figures would be in his room at night and they would turn into demons. That's how it began. So seemingly he was going into this um, an outer body state yeah. and these things, these demons, would notice him. And they notice, oh, hang on, he's out of the body. Yeah. Let's go and have a little... Let's mess about let's go and a have bit a closer more. Look. Yeah. Similar, I guess, to the idea of um, Insidious. Still not seen it. You need to. I still not you seen it. You need to. It's a yeah, good one. Yeah. It's a good one. It, it it explores exactly that concept. Right. That this lad can basically, what they call it, spirit walk um, in his sleep and a demon finds him spirit walking and decides, right, I'm going after the body. Yeah. That sort of thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so after my brother's possession, I was so shook. Everyone knows me, knows how much I love scary shit. I'm always down to see the next scary movie that comes out go to haunted houses, ghost hunting, you name it. Immediately after this, something switched inside me. I don't know how to explain it other than I became a big scaredy cat. <laughs> I remember the Nun movie coming out that that week and I couldn't even watch the trailer without getting spooked. Oh, so this is quite recent then? Yeah, fairly recent. it only came out a couple of years ago. I think 2017? Yeah. Yeah, maybe like in the last four or five years, possibly. Yeah. I literally would change the channel I couldn't even be alone upstairs in my room because I was so scared. I started to notice around this time that I guess they would start to mess with me. Like I said, I'd never experienced anything supernatural before, so this is all new to me at this point. I would take a shower and feel like someone was right outside of the shower curtain. Often. So I would rush the hell out of there. Fair. Fair. It's fair <laughs> enough, yeah. Then a little while after, I noticed that I started to um, astral project. So I think what they mean is very much along the same sort of lines as spirit walk. Yeah. Or an outer body afield. experience. Yeah. So like an astral projection would be um, like we would be able to experience an astral projection. Yeah. With someone else right, okay. projecting themselves to us. Sort right, of okay. like... Um, Luke Skywalker did in, uh, I think it was um, the Empire? second, no, 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 the, the new trilogy. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, so you mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the thought was, yeah. The, no, the, B, the um, B-Tech yeah. Hoth planet. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's like similar sort of thing, like yeah, yeah. astral projects sort of thing. Um, yeah, okay. So I believe that in this case, that's what's happening to her, is that she's actually right. spirit walking rather than astral projection. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and she started to experience it more and more frequently. And at this time, I didn't even have to be lying down for it to start. Wow. I would wake up and hear knocking at my bedroom door. And when I opened it, nobody. Okay. It's been a year now and I'm back to my old self. Thanks to my uncle, who, when I told him what I was experiencing, said to me, if you believe the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, no evil can harm you. And damn, I felt that. Since then, I've strengthened my relationship with God. And I have a completely new outlook on life. Oh, dear. But yeah. That's heavy. Not because of what happened to her, her brother first, and then she's yeah. by extension having it's like the same. It moves on. The, these sort of things, they, they, that's mad. You don't always hear it, but in a lot of cases where people have experienced really, really strong, strange, yeah. quite strangeness, let's yeah, call yeah. it, it's infectious. Yeah. So it's like it, it, it attaches to the next one that comes along or the next yeah. one that's involved in the situation. Yeah, yeah. And it just keeps on moving, keeps on going through it. But yeah, it's that's mad. It's scary. 
<coughs> absolutely scary how it, it is, goes. Yeah, just to think that it's that. Yeah, just to think that it's that. That that easy, mm. I suppose. Or, or you know, oh, I say mate. easy, but that that frequent to, to, to have affected the, you know, the brother, and, the, and then for them to think, well, let's go after her now. She's you know she's experienced it's you know sort of second hand. Mm. You know, let's see if we can, you know, work on. On this one sort of thing. Yeah. It's interesting. It's um, freaky as well. Yeah. But it also comes down to the, the things like, um, so right at the end where, where she says about the words that her uncle said, that if the Holy Spirit lives within you, then nothing can harm you. It's that, it obviously, to, to some people, that's almost like it's just a metaphor. To those that genuinely do believe it, that, that, that God is within them, that mm. that is the the power that keeps the darkness at bay. Yeah. Um. Whereas, you know, some some people might just say, project that light. You mm. know, there's some, yeah. those that are in the new age say, you know, um, cast yourself in a golden white light and, yeah. and that will protect you from yeah, yeah. the evil that is out there. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they haven't experienced anything else. Nothing since, yeah. It was just yeah. a one and done type thing, yeah. But yeah it's you like, don't want to keep going through that, would you? I mean, to actually also to be able to see maybe physical effects of mm. like some sort of demon possession. Yeah. You see you it know? in the, the sort of the films, but don't necessarily know that there's any kind of real world yeah. realism to that. But, you know, for someone to sort of claim it. There's um, there's a really famous big. Um, demon possession case um, that inspired the film The Exorcism of, of Emily Rose. Oh, okay. I can't remember the, the girl's name, but um, it happened in, in Germany in the 70s. Right. Um, and it does have audio um, recording of the attempted exorcisms. Unfortunately, she did pass. She she died as a result of malnourishment. Was the um, wow? Was the coroner's report right? But the the uh, audio footage and the pictures are harrowing. Like this, really? yeah. It's it's hard. It's hard to watch it. It's hard yeah. to listen to it. It's hard to really look into it. But wow. Okay. Yeah. Harrowing and yeah, deeply yeah. terrifying. <laughs> like me, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll check it out. <laughs> so yeah, check that. Check that out. Um, I will. Stuff, yeah. You know, but I'll, I'll put the name up here. Yeah, we'll share a link. There's <laughs> or yeah, something. The name yeah. is there for for <laughs> yeah. that particular case. <laughs> um, because I'm a dunce and I can't remember it right now. No, that's fair. But in post production, I will. But you will, yeah. <laughs> Again, the beauty of post-production. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. I've also got um, an actual several stories, personal accounts. You have. Which yes. is exciting. And, yeah. uh, and it comes from my brother-in-law, Pat, yeah, Patrick Healy. Cheers, Pat. So thank you very much. Cheers, man. Very, very much appreciated. And I'm going to play it for you guys now. So you are yeah. going to be listening to Pat. It's all real time, as it telling were. Telling his story. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Patrick and I've got a couple of spooky stories for you. <laughs> uh, I'll go right back to the first story. This is, um, I didn't actually see any of this uh, because I was too young, but when I was born, from when I was born until I was about five years old, we uh, lived in a house in Langdon in Durham Road. And apparently as my, my mum and dad had told me, and brothers and sisters, it was haunted. And um, what I do have a memory of is I've never slept, I've never sleep, slept, sleepwalked, slept, walked. I've never <laughs> yeah, I don't know. sleepwalked, <laughs> sleepwalked. In sleepwalked my life, yeah. before then or after then. But there was one night when I sat bolt upright in bed. My quilt was so perfectly folded into a quarter and I went into my mum and dad's room and apparently told them that there was a child in my room and I wanted to sleep in their room. Wow. <laughs> and that, so that was odd. And I remember going back into my room in the morning when I woke up and they, you know, I was in my mum and dad's bed and they said, you come in complaining last night, so we let you sleep with us. I walked back into my room and the, I remember seeing the quilt just perfectly folded into a quarter like like I just sat bolt upright and it had kind of flicked off me or, or someone else had, had folded the quilt off of me so that was odd that sounds like something like poltergeist 
almost. Yeah. When stuff is like so neatly placed. Yeah. Like deliberately. Yeah. Done. Like he's, he's so deliberate that yeah. he'd have to be a human with like very, very particular yeah. ways like, of like doing military things. Military style folding yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Weird. Really, yeah, really weird. It's that. bizarre. Yeah. And in that house, uh, my mum actually had it exercised in the end. Um, she had it blessed by the uh, church that we used to go to. They, they actually came and done a blessing on the house. And wow. while they was going around the house, there was there was a team of about three or four people from the church. And someone said that they were standing at the top of the stairs and something hit them on the back of the legs and they kind of lost their footing and nearly fell down the stairs. Um, someone was standing by the back door and said that they felt felt something, you know, like a like a pressure on their chest and then a, a very sharp sort of wind towards them as if someone had uh, run past them at speed but there was no one else in the room. Uh, they went up in the loft to have a look around and found a noose hanging from the rafters in the loft. And while they What? Were- what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come again? What? <laughs> like, What's he never said that before? That's... That is crazy. That is nuts. Yeah. Finding a noose in the loft. Um, no, I explain the weird yeah. bloody goings on. Yeah. Yeah, so like some weird sort of artifact or yeah, something. Yeah, lead with that That's next time. <laughs> lead neck, man. <laughs> oh, dear. While they was in my dad's study, they saw... they um, There was like a couple of people in the room and they swear that they saw a black mist... Um, in a circle shape, and it was kind of uh, like vortexing in into the ground, in down down into the ground. So um, that was quite a, you know, the stories that they told me when I got a bit older. The sleepwalking kind of made sense, and uh, my brothers and sisters always said that there was there was a weird feel out on the landing up at the top of the stairs where the where the person from the church had said that they'd been hit on the back of the leg. So that was that was the first kind of creepy encounter. And then when I moved into, uh, we moved to, we moved around a lot in between this, but we moved back to London and we moved into a house in Summercoats on the Five Links Estate in London. And when we moved into that house, that was very strange to, the window in my bedroom always opened on its own and I actually physically closed it one day and then sat there and watched watched it open on its own. I used to have my friends around all the time. A lot of my friends can vouch for this. We would sit downstairs and it would literally, something would walk from the tops that the stairs were mega creaky in that house. Something would walk from the top of the stairs to the bottom of the stairs and when it got to the bottom it would just stop there would be nothing we'd be looking down the hallway which adjoined to the stairs and you'd almost expect someone to to appear in the hallway because it was just like someone was literally walking down the stairs every single step creaked top to bottom then no one would appear um there would be loud banging and stamping throughout as if someone was running up and down upstairs and um so much that the lights would actually shake downstairs like really heavy banging wow. and things like that. I had nightmares all the time when we first moved into that house and I had to Like that's that's a lot to process right there. Sod that, yeah. That's <clears throat> the windows opening by themselves. Hearing footsteps coming down the stairs, people running about upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, that's like a classic sort of classic haunting. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? That's yeah. So wow. They want you to know, know that they're there. And that's that how right. they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't that right? Jeez. That's crazy. And that the fact that there can be several people to cor- corroborate that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. That's incredible. The strangest nightmare that, you know, this spare room, the, the smallest room in the house, the box room, I had a dream that I went into that room and it was actually a graveyard and there was a uh, coffin with like astroturf over the top of it and it was moving around as if someone was trying to sort of fight their way out and all of a sudden the lid of the the lid of the coffin flew off and it was like um like an asian person kind of sat up you know dead and opened its eyes and started climbing out and following me through the house um and it was it was weird because that only happened when we first moved into the house but after we kind of settled in 
you know, a couple of years later, I'd completely forgotten about it. There was no uneasy feeling anymore in that house and it all just stopped. It was almost like we weren't welcome because we was new. And then over time, it just sort of calmed down and then it completely stopped and I'd completely forgotten about it. That's what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, that that's oddly that's that's very, specific. That's very specific. For it to be just like a possible, like, dream or a memory that you've kind of manifested or whatever that's oddly do you know specific what? down to do you know certain what? That details sounds like the story i just told about spirit yeah. walking spirit walking stuff. yeah that's what yeah, that yeah. sounds like that's that's powerful like it's like they, they weren't you know welcome there until the person had now, th sort that's of some, moved on or, 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 or well, sort of passed on. I and that was about with, with other hauntings in like various yeah. other locations and such is that, yeah. you know, they, they are able to, once they live in a place for so long and they just kind of live with the haunting sort yeah. of thing, that it's almost like that, that energy, whatever it is, settles as well. Mm. That it just kind of like, it's like, um, it's like, I guess it's like, Going into a room that you haven't been in for a long time. Yeah. And you open up that door and the wind comes in, it kicks up all the dust. Yeah. And then, you know, it takes a long time for that dust to all back set, like settle back down. And yeah. Back into place mm. with that door still open. But yeah, that's. Fuck that. <laughs> in, in, you know, to be brutally, uh, <laughs> brutally honest, to, to, for it to be the vision to be that, you know, sort of vivid mm. and that specific. Incredibly specific. That it'd be interesting to know if if um, if, if Pat did any. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how you would, but some sort of like research On to that see whether house, maybe. yeah to see whether an Asian family lived there before before his family did, yeah. or if, if you know if, if something happened to kind of match up to what he you know experienced, just to maybe add a bit of you know closure to it. I guess if yeah. that's what you needed, or yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's incredible. That's mad. Absolutely <laughs> yeah, incredible. Yeah. Um, while I lived in that house, I was doing some uh, construction work in London. Now, at this time, not not while I was at work, but around that time, I was doing a lot of. Uh, I was doing a lot. I was about. I was about eighteen, so I was doing a lot of heavy drinking, and there were some drugs involved <laughs> as well. But um, I'm pretty sure I know what I saw. We was working in a really, really old, um, like, apartment block. And we were working on the top floor. There was only two flats on the top floor. And uh, the entire building was being refurbished. So there was, there was no one in except for a few workers. And it was like a Saturday morning. And we were summoned. There were some workers on the bottom floor. And it, the, the place was about three or four stories high. We was working on the top floor. There was only two flats and only one of them was being worked on. And it was me and the two other guys that I was working with that was in that flat. And we was all inside the flat. I was in the hallway by the front door. And they were both working in the living room. And the door was uh, glass. So you could see it was like frosted glass. So you could see right out the door. And I was standing probably eight foot away from the door sweeping up in the hallway and someone walked past the door and i thought that's weird because there's, there's no one else supposed to be on this floor i thought someone might have been scouting about trying to look to to nick some of our tools so i quickly moved to the door as quick as i could swung it open looked out in the hallway no one was there and there was a fire access staircase literally right next to the door there was a fire access staircase but it was just a big spiral iron staircase so you literally when you walked out onto the top landing it's a really tight just big enough for this staircase to fit straight down and you could look down through the whole building and i ran out that door so quick because i thought someone was scouting to nick our tools there was no one on the landing and there was no one on that staircase and i am dead dead sure i saw a solid black figure move past that doorway that was one thing, and then there was, uh, I don't know if I can say this on here, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, that's Ooh. intriguing. We'll stop it there, then. We'll stop it there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, anyone who's got, you know, a frosted glass, you know, at their, their house or, you know, at work, you, mm. you know what a, you know what the shadow looks like, you know, as it, you as know it moves someone past, past it or, it or whatever. Know, on, on, on the other side, you know, it, there's very few things in that scenario that I think you could explain as being... You know, kind of 
anything else. And, mm. you know, as Pat says, if, you know, he, he ran, you know, sort of to the door, if there wasn't really anywhere else for this, you know, figure or person, you know, to go other than the landing or this staircase. Yeah. And he checked. And I, I know he, he's, he his reasons both. as well, you know, being a tradesman myself. You know, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There we do. No, it does that. happen. Some people do oh, yeah. turn up on site and they do scout about scout looking around, to steal yeah. your tools. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Um, yeah, so I know I'd, I'd get why you would bolt for the door and to the you know sort of the staircase to see whether they had sort of pinched something or or on their way to. Yeah. So at least you can you know warn the others downstairs or or you know apprehend them or whatever. But um, yeah, to get out there that quick and not see anything. You, you would hear or, or see something if it was an actual, you know, sort of person. Yeah, right. And if, you know, and if it's like many of the places in the city, if it's an old building, you know, and they're up on the top floor renovating, have they disturbed, you know, did they well, disturb something or, you know? I've had, obviously with the nature of my job, you know, we do go into mm. old buildings and we do um, renovate. Them, you know, we we modernise them and such, and and I've yeah. worked in quite a few of them in and around London. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's been a few times when I've experienced something like I've seen something out the corner of my in my peripherals, or you know, there's been a few times when like there's once I was working in Sloan Street, so Chelsea. Okay, and um, it was one of my first jobs on this particular trade, and. I moved out of the way of someone on the stairs. So they were coming down. And at first I thought it was like a client because I wasn't really looking up. I was choosing the next track on my phone, you <laughs> yeah. know, so I was, listen I was yeah. listening to music and everything. I, I kind of I sensed someone there um, and there were narrow stairs. And as I stepped to the side to let them down, no one came down. Like no one, like... I remember seeing like the, the the shoe, the foot coming down, and it was like um, it was like a, a, like a grey leather shoe with um, black suit trousers. Right. So okay. thinking it maybe as a client of yeah. some sort. So I remember oh, stepping back to the side, putting my phone away, and um, then yeah, no one came down the stairs. And then when I went back up there to get up there and go carry on with the work. Yeah. Um, no one up there with grey shoes and black suit pants were up there. That's weird. <laughs> that was weird. Touch <laughs> acknowledge them and move out of the way and then for them to not yeah. manifest or, you know, sort of be there, you know. Yeah, and there's been been a few place, places that I've worked on. I even worked on um, an old hunting lodge that used to belong to Henry VIII. Oh, and I remember you saying about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I sent you yeah. some pictures, and it still had the old wooden beams. Mm. It's obviously it'd been expanded around that yeah. point, and that being the core of the building, but mm. it still had the wooden beams, and it was like the old, it was like the old um, crooked house on South End Seafront. Oh, yeah, okay. that sort of thing. Yeah, Maybe yeah. not quite as extreme, but you yeah, felt yeah. like you was walking along sideways and, yeah, and everything. Yeah. But yeah, very odd. It just kind of put your all your perceptions out of kilter. Yeah, very very strange. I'm interested to hear this last one. Well, yeah, if he if he does tell us, yeah, I want to I want to know. Let's go yeah. for it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, I have to because he's probably the the most the most solid uh, apparition that I've ever seen was actually in Scott's mum's house. One of the hosts, Scott Stewart. It was in his mum's house. Um, me and my missus, I'm, I'm Scott's brother, you know, so I'm with Scott's sister. Uh, we were staying at the Scott's parents' house and we were setting up to go to sleep in the front room. And I don't know if you've anyone's familiar, Scott's, Scott's dad, Dean, is very, very tall. He's about six foot four. He's a very tall, big guy. And uh, same thing again. They've got, like, frosted... Uh, stenciled glass that leads from their front room out into the hallway and I am dead dead sure I, w I was sitting on the sofa and puffing my pillow and I saw a solid black figure that was tall enough to be to be Dean Scott's dad and uh, the door was cracked about four inches 
and it was it was so fucking clear to me it was so clear to me that I thought Dean was going to pop his head through the crack in the door and go oh night guys I was just getting a drink it literally clear as day solid black form walked from the right hand side of the door to the left hand side of the door but then nothing appeared the door was cracked about four inches and i could see through the crack of the door it went past the glass and didn't appear at the crack and that was probably my the the most clear sighting i've ever had and the noise that came out of my mouth <laughs> scared the life out of Rian, my <laughs> missus um because it was you know that <laughs> fear that you just can't control I, I just made a noise that I, I i kind of didn't make it i had no control over the noise that came out of my body it was <gasps> I, my throat closed up and it was it was panic stations because i realized what i'd actually seen but um the funny thing is i don't really have you would think you know i was cr that night i was i was crapping myself because i had to sleep on the bed that was closest to the door so i was in i was in i was in bits that night that weren't a good night but then after that i kind of uh i don't i would think that after such a a clear sighting and the fear that i felt that in that moment and on that night for the rest of the night i was pretty scared um, I haven't really felt anything in that house. I thought I'd have a negative feeling. I thought this has ruined it for me now because they're staying here forever and I'm going to spend a lot of time in this house. We go there every Christmas. We visit, you know, a couple of times a week. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time in this house and I'm going to be petrified. And actually, I don't have the negative feeling, but I am I am 100% sure I saw something move past that door. And that's that's pretty much it. That concludes my spooky stories. Um, I hope you're all well. Thank you for listening, and I'll speak to you all soon. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Has he told you that before? No. <laughs> no, he's never told me that before. Jesus. Pat, we need to have words, mate. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that we're needs more, um, we need to discuss. That, I mean, that's... Wow. That's nuts. That's nuts because I've been in the house. I don't as well, even know what to think but, of that. Yeah. Some That's weirdo mad. shadow bastard walking through my mum and dad's hallway. Yeah. Oh, shadow beings, mate. That's, yeah, shadow they're beings. The ones, they're the ones you want to yeah. watch out for. But wow, okay. That's. That's, that's a lot that to process. Me, that. Yeah, that, that, that's, there's that's, a lot there. I didn't. As you say, the other one pointed said, some goosebumps yeah. and like getting chicken skin and all that. Yeah, you like, said that. Wow. Yeah, that's mad. Well, well, thank you very much. Yeah, firstly, thanks, for that, man, Pat. for sharing all of those. They're all really, really good. And he's considering we've done, you know, escape rooms with him that yeah. have all been like horror and scary and you know paranormal, or whatever. And he's never mentioned any. That's of a that. lot of experiences he's and had. That's a lot, man. Yeah, and he's not once been. Oh, yeah, I did something like that happen. To well, me this before, is or, like what I said, though. People again, the stigma, I guess. Keep yeah, quiet about I guess it. So and, yeah, but that's fascinating, man. Yeah. To to have all of those, like. Like happened, and especially that last one. Like, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have, well, I know I wouldn't have slept the wink yeah. that night. And I definitely would have stuck the missus closest to the door and all. <laughs> Why are we switching? Never mind, never mind. Never just mind. go to sleep. Just, yeah, yeah. just go to sleep. Off you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and you know what? <laughs> Him saying that about, about my sister, she's very jumpy. She's jumpy anyway. She's really she? jumpy. So, yeah. I, I get a lot of sick humour out of yeah. it. I have a lot of fun about, with that. But yeah, I mean, I can just imagine. The noise from the pair of them. <laughs> yeah. I would love to know what your parents thought. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what the bloody hell are they doing? <laughs> wow. Yeah, what a story, man. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, thanks for, you know, sharing those, man, and, um, you know, and actually going to the trouble and, and, you know, an effort of actually, you know, sending those in, Yeah, you know, by way of, um, you know, voice note. I, th I think it was probably far easier to articulate them than trying to, you know, type them you know, down. Yeah. Well, uh, to, well to be them, honest, type them out. Sorry. Obviously, you, I know Pat fairly well. <laughs> pretty, know, yeah, pretty well. Been my brother-in-law for, yeah. for quite a number of years now, and <clears throat> I can hear yeah. his voice. He's he's being genuine there. Oh, you can hear that. That's one hundred percent. You can hear the, the emotion in 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 most of those you know stories wow. with, with how he you know communicated them, and 
and stuff. But like my arms have gone cold yeah. from that last one. <laughs> like, oh, no, <laughs> That's weird. You've been there and all. I've been so, there. I've yeah. been in the house. Yeah, it's um, it's it's weird. Yeah. Wow, that one hits home literally. I mean, That's I suppose. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, the only time, you know, when I've when I've been around there, I suppose the only the only time I've had negative energy there is when your dad used to call me Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin, yeah. <laughs> That was pretty <laughs> negative. <laughs> well, still, well, you've been called worse. I have been you? called worse. You have been called worse. Yeah, uh, so I, I suppose Tarquin so ain't that, that yeah. bad. It's in the scheme of things, yeah. <laughs> Mate, we were talking worse. about that, yeah. actually. Not too, like, the only, I think it's last weekend. Really? We were <laughs> talking about that because it's before I moved out to America. It was, yeah. And yeah. you came around to that house, which was in Benfleet, that, and we yeah. were helping my doing dad and his mate doing yeah. the roof. Yeah. And for some reason, <laughs> I Tarquin just no stuck. idea. But what, what he, I, I think it was the friend, your dad's mate, that that said it, wasn't it? And then I think it just stuck. <laughs> yeah, he was chucking seal, uh, chucking uh, roofing tiles down to you, wasn't he? Go, Here you go, Tarquin. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, called worse. So I'll, I'll yep. take that in the uh, in the scheme of things. But uh, but no, um, but no, yeah, that, that, that that was fascinating, man. Yeah. That they were yeah, e excellent encounters, and definitely the sort of thing that. Mm. Uh, you know that we were after but uh yeah but thanks again man for yeah you know for yeah, submitting and, you know and, and to the others as well you know thanks to everyone who went out their way absolutely to but, provided us with I mean, to, the stories yeah i mean big thanks to you pat i mean um yeah i'll give you give you a big shout out man he pat's got his own uh, yeah definitely detailing company he has uh, it's master detailing and he specializes in uh machine polishing yeah paint correction um but also ceramic coating on on your cars he does um yeah tell you what guys go over to master-detailing.co.uk yeah just to have a look at some of the stuff that he does he's got Absolutely. a strong online presence as well definitely on yeah. facebook yeah so definitely check out the facebook because if nothing else you'll uh you know you, you'll appreciate the the passion um, oh, definitely. that he's got for the job and you know in, in trades you know for the most part certainly from what i've experienced you know it's hard to find someone that's got a genuine passion mm. and you know affection for you know for what they do Especially when you either talk to them about it or hear them or see them talking about it, but uh, yeah, you'll you'll learn pretty quickly that he's got a, yeah. a love and a passion for for what he does, and and the evidence is in the work. You know, he shows a lot of um, before and after oh, um, of, of what work. he does, and y yeah, it, I mean, it speaks for itself. So yeah, go and uh, go and check, go and check him out, and uh, yeah, if you're interested, hit him up. It does it'll uh, definitely be worth yeah, it. Yeah, he goes to all over Essex, goes south of the river into Kent as well yeah. over into london um he's mobile but he also does have a studio that he uses in in rochford south end yeah. that area so yeah check him out guys yeah, um, do. yeah. but and then thanks like, like we say thanks to everyone who's uh who's either you know written in or or you know sent voice notes emails whatever it might have been to you know communicate you know stories with us um it's uh yeah it's been much appreciated it's been you know it's been good fun you know yeah. most of these are you know you know, new to us, you know, for the most part. Some of them I'd not heard of before. And, I mean, that you know, was great reacting to that, to be honest. That was, yeah. I mean, it's the first time I mean, I've heard them. It was so. very close to home yeah. as it well, was. Especially that last one. You know, yeah. yeah. And then that the one right. with the trade, you know, as well, obviously being in your line of work. So, uh, yeah. no, it was uh, it was good. And I've enjoyed going over them all and, yeah, learning about some new legends and, yeah, just hearing from, you know, from some of you guys and, uh, you know, the sort of the, the things that, um, you know, that you've gone through. Um, so... Yeah, I think um, I think that's probably where where we where we can end it on that bombshell. Yeah, <laughs> um, we, you know we'd normally have a off the fence uh, segment, but I don't but think this, we need it for this, this one. Ain't, this it's, ain't one of our regular sort the, of episodes. No, is it? it's not the, the the situation for for anything like that. I think we can all make up our own minds from what yeah, we've heard is. and you know from what we've been told. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so into the I suppose the, the usual shout outs as always. You know, thank you again to our our patrons, yeah. uh, Justin and James. Thank, thank you, you guys, very much, guys. Much uh, much appreciated. Very and much. Uh, as always, guys, you know you can uh, join them in you know being part of the prestigious uh, club that is the <laughs> yeah. Cryptid Ramblers Patreon. <laughs> it certainly is prestigious. <laughs> it, that that it is. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, Patreon dot com. Um, the obvious handle cryptid ramblers podcast mm -hmm. um and there you'll see that we've got two tiers um for you to pick from at the moment um priced at four and six pounds respectively uh, plus, plus fat VAT. plus fat yep need to remind you of that <laughs> full disclosure full disclosure <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah as scott said at the start um the the video um version of the podcast would normally be available to uh 
our uh, keen Rambler patron. But uh, as it's uh, a bonus episode, we are going to be making it available to all of you guys. Mm. So you don't have to just listen to us. You can uh, look at our pretty faces uh, as well. Um <laughs> Because, you know, we're just the gift that keeps on giving. Isn't so, that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Yes, you are welcome. <laughs> You're and, welcome. And, uh, you know, we are ad- we are trying out a little something new here as well with it being yeah. a fully produced video as yeah. well, which is going to potentially be another aspect and maybe another tier to yeah, our Patreon. Yeah, if, if it sort of kicks off and, you know, and people appreciate it, and, you know, which, you know, I hope you guys do, then, then yeah, we may uh, include it as um, as a, a perk in another tier, uh, along with some other bits that we're sort of discussing at the moment. Mm. So it's uh, it's ever grown. So if, yeah. if you're it's you know, exciting times, you're looking to join now, now might be the time. Yeah. So, but uh, any support is appreciated, yes. uh, regardless. Um, for those of you who are watching the the video, also you can see our uh, our new home now um, at Hellfire Studios, and. Uh, Guys, check them out. Yeah. They can do podcast. They can do video, you know, photography. They can do full production and, and editing services. You know, the, those guys can do the, the works. And just from talking to them quite recently, you know, they're, they're traveling around the country, yeah. you know, as far as uh, top north and uh, yep. and the, the big- Above the Watford Gap. Above the Watford Gap, yeah, further <laughs> yeah. than M25. You know, they really are going- uh, That's as far north, as we go, yeah, As far as I go, yeah. <laughs> Not brave enough to venture further. And, uh, and you know, of course, you know, sort of London and the surrounding areas. Yeah. So, yeah, head over to hellfirecreative.com for more info on that. And um, if you are interested in any of the services, then uh, go to uh, hellfirestudio.uk. Use the, uh, the code CRYPTID um, for 20% off any said services. Mm-hmm. Just for being a, a, a listener of, uh, of us. Uh, yeah. Ramble on, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, indeed. Um, you know, for however long. Um, now, it might well be worth discussing uh, the next, uh, yeah, episode. The next episode that shall be dropping, not this coming <laughs> Friday, not this Friday. The Friday is past since you listened. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks from now, yeah. ish. <laughs> next weekend. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Basically, it, where this drops, yeah, it'll yeah. be next weekend. Well, it's yeah. confusing because this is dropping after we've recorded it, which is now, and it's yeah. We're very new to confusing this. Confusing myself, yeah, <laughs> yeah, which isn't hard. <laughs> I'll be honest, but uh, but no, we've um, no, we we mentioned it uh, not too uh, long ago, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> complete mind blank what is going on what is going, what is going the on the Wendigo Wendigo of course it is I had something else in my head but that's the it's next the one it's the Wendigo it's that one it's this one it's even on the you bloody know, it's, t-shirt it's on the t-shirt it's on the logo right here <laughs> bloody hell man I know what, what, I know. what, what am I paid for no oh, hold on a minute <laughs> you're not I'm not you're not <laughs> <laughs> thank god for that <laughs> that's a relief the Wendigo sorry yeah. the much uh, you know the much believed much uh, fearful creature um, which uh, comes with some uh, mm, surprises. It does um, indeed. Certainly for you know, certainly for me, who again was you know learning about this, you know, relatively with fresh eyes and ears. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a good one. Um, like I said, it's going to be dropping in uh, the usual time of you know sort of two weeks ish from now. So uh, yeah, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll drop some teasers and whatnot on the on the socials. So keep an eye out for that. Yep. And um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I think that probably about covers it. Yeah. Doesn't it? I don't think I think we've managed to remember everything this time. We have as much as we might Although have we fluffed do, it up. But whilst everyone can see us. Yes. The lovely merch. The merch. You are the right. Merchandise, yes. guys. Come check us out. We'll put links on all of our socials. We'll put yeah. links on the description and in the, the YouTube video. Yes, yeah, we um, will. Come check yeah. us out. We've got this design that I love West Virginia. Because because we do we love West we Virginia <laughs> yeah. and our you know usual listeners will know we'll know how what that means yeah that means yeah. to us Absolutely. but also we do have the the regular Cryptid Ramblers logo yep we've got t shirts we've got hoodies we've got yep. uh, face masks yep keeping it current yeah yep. we've got phone cases yeah um, mugs, mugs yeah as well not just these ones <laughs> yeah not just these ones guys you can't purchase these I'm afraid yeah. <laughs> they're priceless priceless <laughs> I like that we are, we're played <laughs> I like that but yeah go check yeah. out the merch store guys um, yep. any support is you know yep. very much appreciated you can even have little stickers in there and stuff yep. posters absolutely and whatnot. Yep. So, the, but yeah. the choices yeah the, the possibilities are endless <laughs> indeed <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah certainly at the indeed. moment <laughs> yes yeah. but uh, yeah I guess um Good time to wrap up. Wrap it up. And um, on that case, it's uh, goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. And remember, kids, keep it spooky this year, eh?
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's full of magic.